so that we can. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our last <laughs> weekly episode of Wine and Design. Joseph, don't cry. It's okay. We'll see everyone again. <laughs> oh, um, this has been nice. Been what? doing this now for how many weeks? Ten, it's, ten weeks or so, Wendy. Right? Something like that. And it's been so fun. We liked um, going through and helping you guys answer your questions. And um, then we started dueling designers with Jason and Joseph. Oh, is someone hammering? Hi, Jeannie. <laughs> um, but we thought, how fun is it to see some designs um, and almost let's see Jason's design perspective and Joseph's design perspective because each week they were sharing their thoughts and they were so different and so unique. Um, so we started combining it. And then um, now we've been looking at the um, Adler on the Park property and last week we went through that and did the living room space. Mm -hmm. We loved the property so much that Jason and Joseph wanted to design the master bedroom. So um, I know they have put a lot of work into those um, renderings and their thought processes of who their, who, Wendy, who your client is going to be for that property. Um, so I will hand it over to you, Wendy, to talk about the property, and then Jason and Joseph will share their designs with everyone. Great. Thanks, Michelle. And it's been so fun, Jason and Joseph. So appreciate your creativity and your time and your design. It's just been awesome. And I'm sad to say it's our last week, but hopefully we'll get to do some things in person now, and maybe we can pop in, you know, like we talked about, maybe once a quarter and do something fun here. Um, but we appreciate that you guys have joined us each week and you know brought along some friends too along the way. So I'm gonna talk about briefly the history again on the Adler on the Park. Um, so it's, at, it's located at 2700 North Lakeview. Um, it's not currently listed. Um, it will be coming on the market. I'm happy to say that the real estate market has picked back up from April. May was great, and June has continued the upward trend. Um, so that is exciting news for Chicago. Um, so it has two. I'm going to bring up the slides actually. Reboot. I would shut everything down, reboot. And racism and other forms of injustice. But how do you think you love policy? And mute with questions. He also has a higher for African American teachers. It really matters when people like you teaching. I think someone's TV is on. I mm -hmm. hear there's something. <laughs> OK. Sorry, now we're prepared here. Um, so this is just our little intro of Jason and Joseph, who you guys have seen here week after week, and their contact information if you want to follow up with them after Wine and Design. Boy, that's a good picture of me. <laughs> Those are great pictures, actually. Hey, Jason took them. So as mentioned, Adler on the Park, 2700 North Lakeview, are two luxury residences. Um, it's a historic restoration um, that Foster Design Build has been working on and I, uh, for their, their client, and I have been um, the agent helping them also with design and getting this hopefully relisted soon. Here is the historic photo and our new rendering. The home was built in 19, from 1915 to 1917. Um, it took a long time to build, obviously. It's a big home on the side. Over here is the main part of the home. And then along the, this is at the corner of Lakeview and Wrightwood. So along Lakeview here, you have four townhomes as well that are all attached to the, to the home. In 1917, the addition went on um, as well, which I'll talk more about in a minute. So the players here was Henry Dangler and David Adler were the architects chosen for, for Emily Ryerson. Uh, Emily Ryerson, you guys may know Ryerson Steel. Um, definitely a large company in Chicago history. Well, Emily was married to Arthur Ryerson and they lived in Philadelphia. 
And at the time, their eldest, they were traveling in France. Their eldest son moved to, sorry. Oh, eldest, all right, I'm gonna start that over, sorry. <laughs> they were living in Philadelphia. They were traveling to France on vacation with their family, but their eldest son was back home and had a car accident and was killed. And at that time, the quickest way for them to get back was on the Titanic. We all know the Titanic story did not end well for many. So unfortunately, Mr. Ryerson did not make it off the ship. He was not found. Um, Emily and the other children uh, did get in a lifeboat. And when she restarted her life, that was here in Chicago. And she had met Dangler and Adler, uh, which became friends in her artist community. I'm sure uh, that I'm sure Joseph and Jason would like in Emily Ryerson because she was putting up her designers and her architects and all the people in her world in the other little townhomes that were on the side. So maybe one day you'll have someone build you a townhome too. <laughs> um, so as we continue on, this is the historic living room in the home that is getting restored. Um, it's in a lot of the David Adler books. That's the same Adler as the Adler Planetarium, which we all know. Um, right. Dangler was the first one involved and brought in Adler, but unfortunately Dangler died young. So Adler continued his architect career and he's done many homes in the Chicago area and other states as well um, that David Adler continued to, to grow and his name obviously a, a big Chicago name. Um, down below here, you see that hospital bed. So during World War I, um, Mrs. Ryerson moved into the smaller part of the house and she let Children's Memorial use this, um, use this for sick children, um, which was something that was very much needed at that time. And what else can I tell you before we move into our... New, new information, I think um, it became a school after that, um, which was the Harris School, which many, some people may know. I have had people come and visit the home that still went to Harris School and wanted to see it still. Um, so that was in 1946, it became Harris School. And then in 1972, it got sold to Thresholds and that's where it was bought from. So Thresholds had it many years as a recovery center. Unfortunately, the top two floors were dormitories for them and the historic value was not there anymore, but the first and second floor are being restored um, as the larger unit, five bed, two bath um, home. It'll list around 7 million. And then the third and fourth floors are a two bedroom home. Uh, oh, sorry, four bedroom home. Um, two floors as well, and that'll list around five million with four beds, three baths. Here's a historic photo of the ballroom that's getting restored. Another historic photo, or not historic, but our, re our renovation of the foyer. So beautiful. These doors lead into the master bedroom that we'll be speaking about tonight. And then this is the third level where they've got an addition of a conservatory here, Four Seasons kind of room that leads out to this gorgeous outdoor space. And I'm gonna turn this over as we start talking about the room, the master bedroom with Joseph and Jason. So I think Jason, you're up first, right? To show your version of the master room. Right, I was gonna have Wendy just flip to it and see if she could guess whose room it was. But ah. Never mind now. Oh, I'm sorry, I ruined it. Oh, thanks. You gotta <laughs> fill me in on this, on it first. I didn't know you were gonna jump in. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a layout, I guess that somehow I missed the layout. I skipped that slide, but this, is the view over here. This is the big picture window that looks out onto Wrightwood. And then um, you have a big window here that's looking out towards the park on um, Lakeview. Other angles as well. And then the window in the back here, so you've got three main windows in the master bedroom. Um, this one looks out to the west. Oh, 
Okay, so this is my take on the master bedroom. It's a quite large space, so I divided it up into basically three areas. You have your sleeping area with the bed at the top. Then you'll have uh, in the lower right-hand corner, kind of like a dressing table, makeup table. And then over to the left, have a seating area um, with a television on a tilt, obviously. So you can see it from the bed. You can also tilt it for optimum viewing from the seating area. And I chose a new color palette for me. I don't typically go with green, but for some reason, I don't know. This room spoke to me and said, do green. So I did green. So you see here, um, this is a view coming in from the main hallway into the bedroom. You've got a nice view of the dressing table in the corner, day bed under the window. I think it's a nice place to kind of sit and read, relax, also someplace where you can sit, put your shoes on, things like that. Yeah. Here we feature our number one selling Colton um, King bed with the storage drawers at the bottom. I also added some mirror on the wall just to reflect some of the light around in the room and kind of um, offset the dark color on the wall. As you know, if you follow any of our other um, line designs, especially last week where we could kind of just go for broke, do what we want. Um, I like color, I like drama, so I kept that going. I like that. Yeah, very nice. I also Money. like the mirrors. And then when we can keep going. So this just gives you a view from the bed, how you could, you know, the TV obviously it could be on a swivel, so it would swivel out from the wall so you could see it from the bed. Um, also, because of the barrel ceiling and the higher ceiling, I did take the drapery all the way to the ceiling on all the windows. Nice. And then here you have the seating area. Um, I chose our uh, tanning curved um, love seat. Just kind of have it on an angle in the corner, a couple of tables and some art just to kind of finish out the area. I picked the Jackson chair because it sits low. So it's somewhere you can sit, but it doesn't interfere with your view of the television from the bed as well. And it's got a nice back, so it looks good from all court, all the way around in the room. What's the name of that chair again? Jackson. Okay, I love that. Well, I have to get you one, or two, or four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two, I do. Two, okay. <laughs> what color is the couch, Jason? Is that a green? I did it in a darker green. It's uh, one of our high performance fabrics. It's a wool. Um, so, you know, thought I'm going with green, might as well jump all the way in. So I kind of kept it green and cream was the main focus of the colors in the room. That's nice. And then this is just kind of another view of the room from a different angle. Um, one of the things I like in the corner uh, the nesting tables, they're handy so that if you did um, decide you're going to eat a little light snack or have breakfast or something in the room, you can pull those out and, you know, almost use them like a more dressy or more formal uh, TV tray type table. Right, like how you created two different spaces and you used like the area rugs to really dive to find that space that is such a large room? Yeah, I mean, you know, in open spaces, it's always good to try to use an area rug to define your space. Um, here, I picked two different rugs with complementary colors just to really further set the two areas apart. Um, I would imagine, you know, when we were able, if we were able to lay this out for real, that I would then take the area rug that's under the bed and pull some of the darker tones in the rug out for your bed. 
I love this because when I mean, I'm the only one that's physically been in there, but when you're in there, the room doesn't feel that big because people have a lot of like, the advantage of taking care of taking advantage of this area off to the side. Um, and it really makes a big difference. Right? So, yeah, I think that, you know, with the way the room lays out with this little piece over to the side kind of being on an angle, it is going to be something that I think needs to be staged to really show the potential for the room because people are going to look over there and just think it's a wasted space or just extra space that they could have just you know in the room and not really put it to good use right and don't forget it separates it also which you can't see obviously in your rendering but the barrel ceiling is over the bed area and then flattens out over here so it does define it too that way Right, that was one of the, the battles I had with our 3D system. We don't exactly have that capability to curve the ceiling and match the barrel vault. You need new software. It's great. And then here, just again, you know, that part under the window there, I think that's a perfect place to curl up and read a book. Can the drapes go back? The, uh, whatever it is, blind drapes, can they go further to see the window, to open the window if you want? Are they partially open now? They're just partially open. You could open them all the way. Yeah. I just kind of rendered them in, kind of half open, half closed, to kind of give you the idea. But in reality, I would do them so that they would obviously close all the way for privacy because it is a bedroom would probably extend them a little bit further out so that when you open them you would get more of that side window even though it's pretty small yeah okay that's nice and then just another view of the uh dressing table again i incorporated the green leather chair different shade of green but still works in the room gives you a little visual interest some art on the wall to the left, and I hung the mirror pretty low because you'd have to imagine that you want it to be useful when you're sitting at the desk that it is eye level and not, you know, up in the air. Right. I like the gold tones with the green. And then just another view of the bed. I know a couple of my Friends viewing are going to admire the uh, pink and green accents. We're I was about to say up. something, but <laughs> oh. nice touch uh, there. What did you say, Lori? Nice yeah, touch yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, I figured you did. I figured you and a couple others would like that. The he knows his them. audience well. Uh, <laughs> I said, daughters? you know your audience well. No, my wife and some of her sorority members. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, he, but even in design, um, when you look at the color wheel, red is a direct accent of green and pink being a derivative of red, it definitely works. And even if you look at some of the pieces we have here in the design center, they incorporate pink and green naturally. You usually have, you put your wild color on the wall, usually it's in your furniture. Yeah, I, I you know, I went with something a little different this time, I think also, with the dark color on the wall in a bedroom at night it helps open up the room even more i have a really dark color on my bedroom wall and one of the things that happens is at night when you turn off the lights and or you turn the lights down the darker areas of the room just kind of recede and it really opens up for you so interesting. Okay. i think we're moving on now Joseph. Okay, here's my aerial view. <clears throat> Starting with the hallway going leading into the master bedroom. I don't know why that thing is in there, but I can't see it. So um, I divided up the room kind of like Jason did. We pretty, believe it or not, we did not look at each other's design until afterwards. So I used the Colton bed, but in a tufted um, manner. And then I divided up the room with two different rugs like Jason did. I actually took the cue from the historical uh, photos that you had, Wendy, where if you look back at the other one where she had a dressing table with one lamp and a chest and the two uh, chairs on each side. 
So if we go to the next uh, one, this is Jason, uh, mm -hmm. help me with this. We, uh, this is entering from the uh, main rotunda going into the hallway. I did three different uh, brass lamps going down the hallway. It looks like it's a very long hallway. I did a chest underneath with uh, a couple of hurricane lamps and a beautiful piece of artwork. And then it's going in. When you walk in, you'll see, uh, I used a lot of brass. Again, you know it's my room because of the blue and white ginger jars. But again, the seating room with uh, a damask rug, two different sofas, the Anderson, with a uh, back on that one wall, there is uh, a bar. Now, if you notice to the left, in the next slide, you'll see that that is the back of the bed. And of course, we'd upholster it uh, to be the same uh, color as the fabric. But I divided up the room because of the vault that's in the ceiling. And then over to the, the back wall, I did a, a lucite and wood uh, dressing table. It's actually a desk with a beautiful mirror. And then at the foot of the bed, I used the Fairfax sofa and a beautiful stripe. So um, making the two rooms different with uh, more of a pattern rug with color in the bedroom and then over into this main sitting area, I used a lot of grays and blues and uh, light reflecting. That uh, piece that's on the back of the uh, Colton bed is actually a mirrored finish in a gray wood tone. And then all the colors are very neutral, uh, calming. And then I used a couple of brass chandeliers. I used a lot of brass in the room just to re uh, reflect light. So very calming, peaceful. And if we go to the next one, this is the main sitting area again. Uh, two Anderson sofas tufted, giving it a little bit more traditional look. And then the Braymore uh, cocktail table. And then another little C table pulled up for added uh, interest to sit down and drink or whatever. Um, and then the next one. See, that's a bar in the What's that? That's yeah. a bar in the back? That's a bar, absolutely. I love a happy hour in the bedroom. So nice. So when you tell your kids to go to bed, you can go party up there because it's a large room. <laughs> so um, again, I used a beautiful, more of a metal C um, um, bench at the dressing table, which that table is beautiful because it is loose site, so it gives a little bit more airy feeling. And if you, if you look at maybe the next uh, slide, uh, in front of that sofa, we, I actually used the Heron uh, brass table with glass. Jason used it as well. And again, we did not know which, uh, we didn't know who was using what, whatever, but we had pretty much similar things in the room and how we divided it up. So again, it shows that the room is large enough that it could take that. And I think putting the, um, the bed in the middle of the room with the arch or that vaulted ceiling just gives more drama and uh, uh, dramatics to the room. And I wanted it to, uh, to face out the window so you could actually see the sun. Um, and what else do we have next? And again, this shows, oh, this one does not show the cocktail table, but there is a cocktail table in front of it. Nice. A lot of furniture. Oh, yeah. It's a, probably about um, 80,000 or so. You know, you got to <laughs> make it right. And then uh, that chest that's over to there, uh, over to the right. Again, I took my, um, my idea from that uh, iconic uh, rendering that Wendy showed us earlier because there was a chest on the other side. It's not the same room. But I did, I normally don't do a lamp in the middle, but I did that. Uh, and then two chairs flanking because Adler likes symmetry, so I did that. So just very peaceful calming. And then the bench, oh, like Jason did the little uh, settee. I did a bench with tufting and that's actually brass. So again, uh, lighting in all the brass and then a little bit of brass on the bench. And then that table that's overall against that wall, it's actually a, a applied, hand applied um, gold leafing and there's studs all around, it's quite beautiful. It almost looks like a shark skin on top of it, so. Not sure if I'm showing the right pieces here. Yeah. Um, go back one. Here? Yeah, yep, so, so that, in that, right there, that gold um, yeah. three door chest. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of uh, beautiful reflecting abilities in the room. And then again, my um, blue and white that I absolutely love, so. That's my, um, you know, my signature uh, that I love to do in every room. And I don't know if there's anything else. Two beautiful rooms. Mm -hmm. Thank what you. Happened? I just went black here. Uh, yeah, the presentation ended. Um, oh. So interesting how you placed the bed in the middle would never sure cross most people's minds. That takes a leap of faith. 
That's yeah, why Joseph, tell us why you chose to do that. Because I thought it was so interesting too. It's something because not a lot when, of people do. If you saw that that barreled ceiling, when Jason, uh, he couldn't really show it in the rendering that he did for us. And again, thank you, Jason, for doing all those beautiful uh, rooms. Because that I put it right in the center of the barrel to give height. Because if it was, say, a 10-foot ceiling, it would really make it look really closed in. So be, because that's the highest point in the room, I wanted to center because I didn't want to put a wall. I wanted to that. Uh, looked like when you walked into the room that it was actually two rooms and as you walk in the first thing you see is the beautiful sitting room and you don't actually see a bed think about it, if you can't make your bed you know it doesn't look good so you actually see the beautiful sitting room and uh, an area where you can sit down and you know if you don't want to go downstairs and um, you know have a, a meal or whatever you're upstairs you have the bar and I'm sure that they probably will have a butler or somebody serving them or whatever but uh, again, that's and hopefully uh, making their bed and you're yeah. saying they don't have to make their bed. You know, the other thing <laughs> that we couldn't really accurately show, but where the master bedroom lays out in this unit, it's pretty isolated down at one end of the unit by itself. And so I think thinking about how the person would, the person that's living there, how they would use the room, how they would live. I think that having this sitting area and incorporating like the bar that Joseph did and um, anything else that they could do, they could almost be self-contained in there. Like once they Smart. go to bed for the evening or shut it down for the day, they could still live in the room and then still go over there and go to bed and kind of have that dual function in the room without having to leave the room. Because the kitchen, it looks like from the floor plan, a little bit, a little bit away from it. Yes, I don't know how I make that slide up. I could, uh, I could probably grab it, but um, I love them both. I loved, I loved both designs, the furniture and the color. Um, Joseph, I didn't know blue was your um, signature color, but I like the way it popped in each of section of the room and then I like the way that the furniture was placed um, strategically around the room it when you looked at the room it did look like a lot of furniture but it didn't seem overwhelming no it's shocking how much you can really fit right, we're here to sell yeah. furniture <laughs> it, 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 right. I mean, if you if you look really at both the rooms Jason and I we both if you count up all the pieces there is a lot because the room is so large there are a lot of pieces in there. So you actually get dual function. You get a living space and a bedroom space. So there's a lot of furniture in there and we left no wall unattended. So with artwork and uh, you know, that's what design's about. So I think that, um, and Jason put that green on there cause he knows that room's gonna sell because green, you know, you think of money, people are gonna walk in there and they're gonna love that, that color because you know, uh, the color of the walls really make you feel warm and it makes you feel more inviting. So I think we, again, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Here, I've got the uh, bedroom layout to share at least so people see the full picture here. So you're coming in from that beautiful round foyer we saw and this was the long hallway. Is this showing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, down the long hallway, so there's a large closet here and the master bath and Joseph had that um, table mm -hmm. here on that wall and then you're coming into the areas of the bedroom. Right. That was really nice. I like the hallway. It was very inviting. But well, I actually love the colors yeah. that Jason presented. It's like, can we just mirror all of them and mesh them all together? It just yeah. Because yeah. actually... Yeah. You yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Jason and I both use the same bed. We use the same cocktail table. We use basic and we use the same little chairs that are lower. So really you can see in this master bedroom, they only did a bed and two nightstands and uh, two uh, club chairs and a cocktail table. So, I mean, they, I guess they didn't want to make a lot of money. I mean, we're here to help you. But it really gives the room a lot of functionality, like you guys said, and I, I think they were both really beautiful and very different takes, but still using a lot of the same pieces, um, which I thought was very interesting. Can I ask a question? Please. Yes. 
Yes, you may. So, um, when you put that kind of like um, love seat, is that what you would call it at the end of the bed? Um, Jason, is it Jason that did that, that put it at the end of the bed there where no, it's, I, it's that was Joseph. Okay, sorry, Joseph. Yeah. Is there like a guideline in terms of like what kind of bed you can do that with? Do no, depending on, I used a king size bed in that room and that's actually, I was telling Michelle and Jason, I actually did my room like that. So I have the Fairfax sofa at the end of my bed. So I think the Fairfax is maybe 70, I'm not sure. But uh, again, no, if, you know, depending on if it's a king size bed, yes, you could do like a 65 or so because a king size bed is what, 85 or a little bit uh, wider. So it just, you know, it's, you could even do a beautiful bench or the, if you remember with Jason had that beautiful set T, you could uh, put that at the end of the bed also. So. And I think Jason, but you have the storage bed. So you had the drawers that come out the front in your right. rendering. So therefore you wouldn't want to put anything in front of that, but. No, it doesn't have to, you can do something that goes higher than the bed, um, like like Jason or Joseph did. Um, I think that it, there's no real kind of bed you should not put a, a bench in front of, right? Unless you have right. to open the storage drawers. So if, with a sleigh bed, for example, that has a pronounced foot, like a footboard, would you avoid, like I've always had a, one without a back like a, a bench without a back but what's interesting about your design is that there's a back like it's it looks like a real couch can you do that with a sleigh bed or something with a pronounced foot yeah. yes michelle i actually have a little love seat at the foot of my bed at home and we have a sleigh bed and it fits in there nicely you know you i think you just have to look at the proportions of the back height of your sofa and the footboard. My sofa is pretty low slung. It's a low kind of modern piece. So it fits right under the curve of the sleigh bed. Okay. So then you just have pillows up against the back of it so that you're not, you know, laying up against, you know, hit your head on the right. edge of the, the footboard. But if you, I guess, can you see my hands in the... Yeah, sleigh? I see you. So yeah. my headboard, my the back of my sofa probably comes like right there to my footboard. Okay, fantastic. Thank you guys. That's very interesting. I would have never thought to do that. That's why you come to Ethan Allen and hire us for your designers. That's amazing. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions on the home or on their designs or anything in general? Any design questions? I had no question with, on the same topic that you had there with the uh, couch or settee or whatever it is in at the foot of the bed. That particular one that Joseph Ward seemed to come backwards like this up over the bed a little bit. And I didn't know if that was, gave a confining feeling or how difficult it became to make the bed, assuming the butler's on vacation. Right. No, not really not any different if you think about it, Sherwin, by just by putting, if you had a, a tall footboard at the bottom, the same thing. And you probably wouldn't put it up as close, maybe where the back arches, maybe put it uh, so it looks like it's oh, fairly uh, close. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. They're both great designs. They're very Thank interesting. You. Yeah. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, Joseph, ask your question. Who is that beautiful lady, Jeannie? She is gorgeous. Who is she? Who? Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. She's on mute. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's my mother. Wait, that's oh. your mom? <laughs> I didn't recognize yeah. you, mom. Don't <laughs> let me unmute her. <laughs> I don't know. Mom, you're not unmuting yourself. She has never sound on. No. <laughs> Probably because my niece is in the background making noise. Well, yeah. I, I, like I only call people by their last name. So hi, Mrs. Wilder. I didn't know that was you. You're beautiful. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. you're gorgeous. Yeah, I can't figure out why it's so uh, bright. I closed all the blinds and everything. Where, where is <laughs> good light lighting. It's from? good lighting for you. Yes, yeah, there's it's no light in here. I closed the blinds. That's Thank all right. You. You're the shining star. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I give my I get some of my design taste from my mother. 
Yes. I can see the bright red wall in her home. Yes. Oh yeah. That's this is my office. I forgot that was gonna be showing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the best place to be, but yeah, it's a good color, yeah. Well all well, I Jason, can say, I think it's all his taste from his mother. Yeah. All I can <laughs> say is that I've enjoyed every one of you. I feel like there's such a close connection and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Very interesting. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Thank you. It's been mm -hmm. so fun. So, I like, promise when you to come in wonderful. and visit you when I come to Chicago. Okay. Yes, yeah, please. Come we'll have it. a when we're, we're allowed to have you. gatherings. We'll have a wine and design in real life gathering. Oh, that'd be nice. Oh, that'll be <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's awesome. I always buy something from my home when I travel, so I promise I'll buy it in Ethan Allen now. So <laughs> let's promise that we'll all come and visit all of us here. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm coming there. Okay. And if you ever want to come visit the Adler on the park, you are always welcome. I'm happy to walk through. If you just want to see it for fun, for you know the history, it's always open um, to visitors. So I'm happy to do that. That'd be great. That'd be, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. It's a special place. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We everyone. have a group. Cheers. 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 Cheers, everyone. Cheers. I've enjoyed the whole series. Thank you. Be well, be good, and yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. In and thank you. We'll we'll all see each other again soon. Yeah. 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 Take care. Stay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.